With a unanimous decision win over the streaking Tracy Cortez at UFC on ESPN 59, Rose Namajunas remains in the hunt for a third title reign. Her problem is that the wait is set to continue for a little longer. Cortez took the fight on short notice, looking to fast track her title run with her 12th straight victory. Her problem was that she was facing the two-time strawweight champion, Thug Rose, who once again showed that she's levels ahead of almost everyone in the sport. After losing her flyweight debut, a five-round decision against the second-ranked contender, Manon Firo, in which Rose broke her finger in the first round, Nama Yunus has now thoroughly outclassed two ranked contenders, and she knows what she wants next. Give me the belt, man. I want it. I'm Colorado's first UFC champion, so I want to bring the second one back here, demanded Rose after the hometown win. Either that or maybe a women's BMF. I don't know. Alexa Grasso is the current champion, calling for a September rematch at UFC Noche against her arch-rival, the former champion Valentina Shevchenko. Should Shevchenko turn down the offer, the number two ranked contender Manon Firo, who has been waiting for over a year herself, is more than willing to take Shevchenko's place. That leaves Namajunas at least a year away from a flyweight title shot. So what about her mention of the BMF belt? Her two-time vanquished opponent, Joanna Janjojcik, stated just last week that she is ready and willing to come out of retirement to fight for the BMF title. Coincidence? Let's hope not. John Silver's third-round doctor stoppage victory over Drew Dober won UFC on ESPN 59's blood-soaked fight of the night. Performance bonuses went to Charles Johnson and Montel Jackson for their knockouts. Jackson scored his in just 18 seconds. In other UFC news, Alex Pereira looks to have buried the hatchet with Israel Adesanya, and I don't mean in his back. I'm here supporting him. I already fought him. Not going to say he should lose. I'm not mad at him. No grudges, said the light heavyweight champion. If he doesn't cheer for me, that's not my problem. But I'm here cheering for him. After a four-fight rivalry across two forms of combat, Adesanya finally got his first win over Pereira in their final outing. That was in 2023 to reclaim the UFC middleweight title Pereira took from him in 2022. The following year, Pereira moved to light heavyweight, where he quickly claimed the title, a feat Adesanya failed to accomplish back in 2021. Adesanya is now set to fight for his third middleweight championship this August at UFC 305 in Perth, Australia, where he faces the new champ, Dreykus Duplessis. I don't see Adesanya losing, Pereira said of his old foe. It's what I think. I don't think he loses this fight. I hope he wins because he has a beautiful story. I think he has to continue his story. After back-to-back -back losses, the former middleweight champion, Danny Jacobs, has announced his retirement from boxing. Jacobs, 37, a Brooklyn-born New Yorker, rose to fame after ending Gennady Golovkin's 23-fight knockout streak, becoming the first man to take Triple G the full 12 rounds. After such a strong showing against Golovkin, Jacobs went on to win the IBF world title. That belt earned him a huge money fight with Canelo Alvarez, who also couldn't put away the Miracle Man. However, what makes Jacob so incredible is that five years into his professional boxing career, he was diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer that also couldn't stop him. I'm the first cancer survivor to be a boxing world champion. The biggest accomplishment I've ever achieved, wrote Jacobs on Instagram. Being able to inspire others with my story has always made me feel like my life meant more than just fighting inside the ring. In May of 2011, Jacobs woke up completely paralysed and had to undergo surgery to remove a tumour that had wrapped around his spine. Not only did he survive, he returned to boxing and won a world title. And he's the only man in history who can say that. To the junior featherweights, now you're in a way finalised his next defence of the undisputed junior featherweight title. But he's still not going to the States.
There's been increasing pressure on the Japanese superstar to return to America for his next title fight, Las Vegas in particular, where he hasn't fought since June of 2021. But why would he? The monster's last bout was in front of almost 60,000 fans at the Tokyo Dome, and his previous five fights were also massive arena shows in Japan. He doesn't need America, and there isn't a trace of America in his next fight. The Japanese superstar will face the Irishman TJ Doney, who fights out of Australia this September, and it will once again be at home in Tokyo. And in other boxing news, Nate Diaz has reportedly filed a lawsuit against the fight promoter Solomon Engel and his company Fanmio, claiming that he hasn't been paid his cut of the purse from his bout with former UFC rival Jorge Masvidal. Diaz claims that he signed a deal with Fanmio that would see him collect $9 million for stepping into the ring. Apparently, Engel has since told Diaz that he can't pay that much because the bout did not perform as well as expected and that Engel's wife might divorce him over the financial loss. And in championship results, Jaron Ennis retired David Avenesian after the fifth round to retain the IBF welterweight title. And Sky Nicholson's first successful defence of the WBC women's featherweight belt ended with a complete shutout against Deanna Vargas. At UFC on ESPN 60, Amanda Lemos and Werner Jandaroba headline in an all-Brazil battle for women's strawweight supremacy. Brad Tavares and Jun Yong Park have the co-main event spot. In kickboxing at Glory 93, the lightweight champ Tajani Bestati is moving up a division to face the former welterweight champ Andy Semelia in a super fight. On the same card, the featherweight champ at Panamron Katmakau defends against Kento Haraguchi. And in boxing, there's a massive night of championship bouts happening in Japan. Junto Nakatani and Kosei Tanaka both defend titles. Riku Kano and Anthony Olaskwaga are scheduled to go 12 rounds for the vacant WBO flyweight title. And also fighting on the card is combat superstar Tenshin Nasukawa. But unfortunately for the sport of boxing, the big pay-per-view is Jake Paul versus Mike Perry, with the undisputed champ Amanda Serrano not defending any of her belts against Stevie Morgan in the Kome. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.